Tracy's good, Frank. You know, she's good. She turned uh, eight months, three days ago. Hard to believe. And she was born, time stopped for us, for all of us, really. Missy, the older kids, me, Missy, most of all. Calendars don't lie. Eight months, eight months. She's still tiny, but you know she's growing. She's gaining more weight, a little more. Some of them, most of the babies, like Tracy, they have heart problems. But Tracy's heart is perfect. Mm. Quiet in here, Frank. Always quiet on Tuesdays. I don't. I don't remember. I don't think you used to come in so early in the week. Maybe I did. It's quiet. Hey, Frank, big news today at Penn, huh? You see that? The electrical, numerical integrator and computer right here in Philadelphia. February 15th, 1947 puts Philly on the map. <laughs> Science section, no. Science, no. This is front page. It's front page, big news. <laughs> Things are changing. You don't trust, you don't trust computers. You have to. You have to stay open to new ideas. You have to stay open to new ideas, Frank. Missy and me, we're reading all about it. You know me, Mr. Science, Missy, for Christ's sake. She's the president of Sigma Phi at State College. Reason I fell in love with her, she's smart. And beautiful mm. and funny. Mm. Whole floor of the engineer building, building, Frank, a whole floor. 30 tons, 18,000 vacuum tubes, miles of wiring, miles, ENIAC. Ask ENIAC the most complicated question. ENIAC will give you the answer instantly. Cool. Instantly! <laughs> <laughs> I miss coming in here. Tracy takes a lot of attention. No, time from Missy. And me both. No, no, we're good. We're good. It just, it just, it just calls on you, you know, day and night. Missy, as uh, Tracy sleeping in our bedroom, her crib is right next to our bed. Makes it better, all of us together. When I wake up in the night, I can hear Tracy blowing bubbles in her sleep. Mm -hmm. A lot of them do that. Um, but I love listening to I love listening to her. Makes me think of the the seashore, the waves. Frank, sometimes I think Missy thinks it's uh it's her fault or something, you know? Which is crazy. Not not crazy, but she's been she's been praying a lot uh going to mass lately she's becoming religious no no of course not it's not bad it's just um you know a woman who used to <laughs> write at the top of each page evidence drives knowledge i mean every page evidence drives knowledge she was strict with herself serious but I I understand. Dr. John William Mulkey, 38. <laughs> Christ, 38. That's how old I am. Dr. Mulkey says it took ENIAC under two hours to give a solution that would take 100 men a whole year to solve. Since the war, Frank, every day, something new, I swear, every day, discovery. The world's opening up. Opening up. <laughs> Missy's hanging relics, you know, blessed uh, metals, scapulas, you know, who knows what's all around Tracy's crib. <laughs> We've been putting money aside as much as we can for a while now for Missy, you know, 
go back to graduate school. She wants to um, she wants to continue her research. Well, her concentration is theoretical physics, physics that tries to explain, um, predict using mathematical models and abstractions where the universe came from and where we're going. Her father worked at DuPont Labs. I mean, she was she was a born scientist. Hmm. Now, at high school, the kids at Overbrook, you know, Frank, a, a very varied bunch. Most of them don't give it don't they don't give a shit about physics. Most of them don't want to be a scientist, but they they think like they are. I can teach them that it's important. When my dad came. My dad came in here, you know, he, he loved it. We talk about everything. We talk about everything at this very bar. I miss him so much. I could have talked to him about Tracy. You know what to do. So I was just driving by and I stopped. You know, last night I'm I'm in bed. I'm listening to Tracy. And Missy wakes up in the dark and she starts she starts telling me that we we have to take Tracy to Portugal. <laughs> To the shrine of Our Lady Fatima. You ever you ever heard of that, Frank? I, I'm Catholic, but I missed it. I missed it somehow. Yeah, Portugal. Mary, you know uh, the Blessed Mother. She started appearing to these these uh, these three little shepherd children in 1917, and she starts you know like doing all these um, these miracles. No, I mean, no one believed, I don't believe, no one did it first. No one believed these little shepherds. If they put them in jail, then, <laughs> then they let out, uh, you know, the blessed mother and they let them out and the blessed mother, she starts right back up and she promises that she'll perform one big last miracle. So everyone will believe she has to go back to heaven or something. I don't know. So she tells them, um, it'll be October 13th. 1917. Yeah, cool. <laughs> you should hear Missy tell it. <laughs> it. It's it's a rainy day, pouring, pouring wet. Still, sixty thousand people show up: priests, nuns, regular people, newspaper reporters, Polish scientists. I mean, they're, everybody. There are there are personal accounts, and everybody's soaking wet, waiting, and the rain just stops. And the sun comes out and everybody's looking at the sun, right? The sun's all, all silvery and it starts, it starts spinning, right? Like it was, like it was cut loose from the side, zigzagging, dancing back and forth. And then it starts spiraling down, heading for earth fast. It starts getting hot. People start screaming and crying and fainting, ducking under carts and trees as anywhere they can. And the puddles dry up, they dry up, Frank. And the earth dries up and the clothes dry and then it stops. It just stops. And Our Lady Fatima appears. They all see her. Most of them do right away. She starts curing people of horrible things. Missy says she still does. I mean, Our Lady isn't there. Still, it's a miraculous place and people are still cured. Missy wants Tracy to be better, to get more normal, just just better. I read everything I can get my hands on about tr babies like Tracy, Frank. In France, there is this, in this, in this one lab, this scientist is studying chromosomes. He thinks that that's where the answer is. Some abnormality in these chromosomes. Nothing conclusive, but he feels he's close. They are close to finding something. He's a scientist. 
we took Tracy for her doctor's visit, uh, a checkup today. And after the checkup, the doctor asks us to sit down. We see he's holding Tracy, a doctor, a scientist says, uh, with this kind of child, he says they're, uh, they're institutions that specialize in caring for for children like Tracy, for some families, it's the best possible solution, he says. Many of his patients' parents decide that an institution is best to institute. The child is best for everybody in the whole family. I said to her, I start trembling. I mean, she's crying. She can't stop. Driving home, Missy says, you know, we have the money. We have the money we've been saving to make it possible. We have to go for it. As a kid, <laughs> I, I collected scientists like baseball cards. One of my favorite scientists, Georges Lamata. He was my inspiration. Yeah, a role model. A theoretical physicist like like Missy. He was a Catholic priest. Now, in 1927, Frank, he proposed a system of ideas, a theory that 15 billion years ago, the universe, our universe, began from a single point. Primeval atom, incredibly hot, incredibly dense, and exploded outward. Feeling all the space, the particles in our universe, like a soup proton, simple and complex protons and neutrons and hydrogen atoms grouping together in clouds and planets and asteroids, galaxies, and finally, us, (laughs) you and me, Missy and Tracy, and three little shepherds and Father Lamatra, and who knows, Our Lady Fatima, all of us, everything. Everything from the very same atom. Rushing outward faster and further and further, expanding together. He was a scientist. He believed in miracles. Thank mm-hmm. you.